Hello everyone and welcome to the React Native Academy. In this tutorial we will build the iOS stopwatch application in React Native. The app consists of three screens. On the initial screen you can see the timer set to zeros and the two buttons, the lab button and the start button. The lab button is disabled until you start the timer with the start button. Once it is running, you can press the lap to measure the speed times. When there are at least three laps, the slowest and the fastest lap are highlighted. The current lap increases in real time together with the main timer. When the stopwatch is running, you can stop it. From here you can resume or reset. Reset brings you back to the initial screen. We will refer to this design during development to pick the colors and make sure that our app resembles the original iOS stopwatch application. Before we start the implementation, let's make a quick thinking in React exercise. When you start a development project, usually you get some kind of mockups or designs. The first step is to break them down into the components that might be needed in your application. The best way to identify components is to think about their responsibility. Each component should ideally do one thing. If it does more, it should be split into more specific components. You can also take a look at the data displayed in the app. Each component should present a single piece of data. I mark the components with rectangles. Let's give them some meaningful names and discuss their responsibility. App is the top level component. It houses all the other components. Timer displays the current time measurement. Buttons row display individual buttons and arrange them horizontally. Round button is a component for the cycle button. Now we've got labs table, which is a scrollable list of individual labs. Each lab component displays a single time measurement. We've got our components identified, so let's start the development by creating a project with a create React Native app tool. So I type create React Native app and then name of our application, which is stopwatch. It might take a couple of minutes for the app to be created, so let's time travel. Okay, the app is created and I can enter the project folder and start the packager by typing yarn start. The packager bundles all the sources together. It builds the app and starts the development server. In the meantime, let's open my code editor. App.js is the entry point for our application. We will start implementation here. Okay, I can also see that the packager has started, so I am ready to start the iOS emulator by pressing I. Now as the app is running, let's think about the data model that represents the application data. It will be used to develop a static version of the application that renders the user interface. We need a minimum data model at this moment. It will probably evolve over time and go into component state. But now for simplicity, I will store it as a constant inside app.js. So I tap const data equals timer. Let's give it some sample value and labs. Again, I will enter some values. We have the main timer here. It displays duration of time. We will store it as a number of milliseconds between starting the timer and current time. Next, we've got a list of labs. We will store them as an array in the very same format, as milliseconds representing time intervals. 
We will start the development with a static application that renders the user interface based on the data we define here. Our app should only take the data and display it, without any interactions from a user. We will start with a static application that displays the data that we defined in a data constant. Our app should just take this data and display it without any interactions from a user. First, I clean the code by removing the semicolons. They are totally optional in JavaScript. And for me, not using them makes the code more clear and readable. This is a matter of personal preference, so just make a choice and stay consistent. Next, I remove the contents of the app component and import the component directly to have simpler extends form. Okay, now I will modify the style of app component. Styles in React Native are written in JavaScript. The syntax is similar to CSS, but there are some differences. For instance, the styles are not inherited by child components. I remove justify content as I don't want the content to be centered vertically. I will also change background of the app to the dark color of our original app. So I will pick this color and paste it here. It's time to implement the timer component. It will be a functional component that takes a single property, the time reading. So function timer takes a single parameter interval. And from here, I return just a single text element that displays the reading. Now I add the timer to the app component timer and set the interval property to data timer. You can see that nothing has changed because the default text color in React Native is black. Let's add some styling to the timer. So I set style to styles timer and now I define timer. First color will be white. Okay, let's make it bigger. And thinner. So I set font weight to 200. I will add also some space above the timer by setting top padding property of the app components. So padding top, let's make it 100 or a bit more 130. I could either set the padding top inside the app or top margin of the timer, but it's better when the parent component arranges its children. This way you might use the timer in other places of the application. The timer looks good, but it renders the interval just as a number of milliseconds. We need to parse it into minutes, seconds and fractions of the second. I will use moment library for that. Moment is the most popular JavaScript library to parse and manipulate dates. So let's import it, yarn, add, moment. Next I will import it, so import moment from moment and use it inside the timer component to parse the milliseconds. So const duration is equal to moment duration and I pass interval as a parameter. Now instead of interval I can get the exact minutes, seconds and centiseconds. So let's split it into two lines and now duration minutes. Okay. 
van duration seconds good and duration milliseconds okay i also wrap text component in parents because it spans multiple lines and this way it's a bit more readable okay it looks good but i only want two decimal places after number of seconds so i will divide number of milliseconds by 10 so const centi seconds is equal to this divided by 10 and i plug it here okay we don't need this 0.7 so i will round it now the timer component is done in the next step i will display a row with two buttons let's start with a single button it will be implemented as a round button functional component so function round button it has three properties a title a text color and a background color i start with returning a single view component title is displayed with a text component so title and color is passed as an inline style to this text component so style is equal now just color okay now i can add the round button and display it below the timer component round button i set title to start and i pick the colors from the designs so first the text color and now the background okay now i will pass the background to the style of the view or component that wraps the title the corresponding style property is background color and i set this value to background Okay, you can see the dark green background. Let's add some more styles to make the button looks like on our designs. I place it in square brackets to make it work together with the inline style I set for the background color. Now let's call it styles button. Let's define it. okay let's make the button 80 by 80 okay good now to make it round i set border radius to 40 which is half of its size so that's 40 okay good now i need to center the title vertically and horizontally so justify content center and align items center okay now let's make this text a little bigger so again i put the square brackets here and add a style definition so styles button title comma color button title let's start with font size 
16 and see how it looks. Okay, I will make it a little bit bigger. 18 is okay. Now I will implement the thin border inside the button. So I will add another view inside the round button component. Okay, and add a style to it, which will be name styles button border. Okay, now let's define this style. So, button border, I will make it just a little smaller than the button. So, instead of 80 by 80, let's start with, for instance, 76 by 76. Okay, and let's set border radius again to half of the size, so to 38, and border width to 2. Okay, nice. Now I need to center the title again. So justify content center and align items center. So the basic button component is ready now. Now let's try to display the reset button left to the start button just like on this design. So I first copy the buttons here and now I pick the colors. So the background is dark gray. The title says reset and the color, let's assume that it's white. The buttons are displayed one below the other. So I need to put them inside their own container component that will arrange their positions and align them horizontally. So I call it buttons row and again it's a functional component. Function buttons row return buttons row will just take its children and display it inside a view component that has some additional styling added so view and now i just output children here and set the style to styles buttons row okay now I can use this component here and move the buttons inside. Okay, now let's define the style for buttons row component. So buttons row, first I set flex direction to row. Okay, now I will set align self to stretch so that buttons row takes the whole size of the screen and set justify content to space between so that the buttons are located at the sides of the view. I will also add some space above the buttons and below the timer. So margin top is, let's start with 80. Okay, looks good. Now I will also add a small horizontal padding to the container so that there's a space around the buttons. So let's get back to the container, padding horizontal. 20 should be good. 
Okay, good. Now we have the buttons displayed. In the next step, we will display the labs below the buttons. So let's define the components for them. So we will have a functional component lab that takes two parameters, a lab number and its duration. And now let's implement it as a view wrapping to text component. So text first will display a lab number and another text component will display interval. Next goes the labs table component, so function labs table. It takes a single parameter, which is the array of labs. And I start implementation by wrapping the contents with a scroll view component, so that if there are several labs that don't fit a single screen, I can browse them and see all of them. So scroll view, I need to import it as well. So import scroll view. And inside the scroll view, I just map the labs. So lab index into individual lab elements. So lab number, let's start with index and interval is just the lab value. Okay, now let's add the styling for the lab component to make it visible. I name the style of the view as just lab and I also add styling to the text element. So I call it styles lab text and the same for the interval. Now let's define these styles. So I will start with lab text and I make it white. Okay. Now it's good moment to add the labs table below the buttons to have the components displayed so we could see if the styles are defined correctly. So data labs. Okay. Nice. First thing, I get the warning that each child in an array should have a unique key property. This is used by React to identify elements of the array uniquely if the component, if the data changes. The next thing is that the indices are not arranged correctly. We should have lab number 4, then 3, 2, 1. I can fix the numbering by subtracting from the number of labs a current index in a map. So I will change this to labs length minus index. Now this number will identify uniquely each lab, so I can use it also as a key property. Labs length minus index. Let's split it into several lines. Okay, and the warning is gone. Now let's finish the styling. So color is good. I will also make the text bigger. So the same size as for the button components, 18. Okay, and now I implement style of the 
wrapping view. First, I set flex direction to row. And now I align these two elements at the sides of the screen, just like for the buttons. So I use justify content space between. Okay, and now nothing changed, but why? Because the scroll view does not take the whole screen, only the portion of it. So let's add a style for the scroll view and stretch it across the whole application window. So I will name it just scroll view and set align self as stretch. Now I can go to the scroll view and set the style. Style equals styles scroll view. Okay, now let's add the border between the elements. It is enough to add the top border. So I pick the color from the designs. The color is very similar to the background, so it's hard to catch it, but I got it. And now let's go to the lab. Border color is what I just picked. Border top width is one. Okay, you can see the border, but it's, it's, it's very dark, but it's okay. And now I will just add some space around the lab data. So padding vertical, let's try if 10 is sufficient. Nice. The last thing to do is to add a space between the buttons and the labs. So let's go back to button row component and add margin bottom equal to let's say 30. Okay, we've got the space ready. Now we have two more things to do with implementation of the labs. First, it's to parse the duration of a single lab and display it in the very same format as for the main timer. And next, it's to highlight the fastest and the slowest lap. For lap duration, we could reuse the timer component. And it does exactly what we intend to do, but only contains different styling. We could abstract it a bit and make style its second property. So I put style here and now I style it with the value passed as a property. Now the style is gone because I need to find the invocation of timer and set the style here. So style it equals to styles timer. Okay, it looks good again. Now I can use the very same component inside the lab. So instead of the text, I use timer. The style remains the same and the only difference is that now we'll pass interval as a property and not as a child. So interval is equal to interval. Let's close the tag and we got it working. To highlight the fastest and the slowest lab, I will add two new properties to the lab component. And I will name them just fastest and slowest. Okay, I will pick the colors from the designs and add the corresponding styles. So let's start with picking the colors. First, the fastest lab. Okay, this one will be good. Now fastest. 
OK. And color is the same for the slowest lab. Color. Let's pick it again. These styles will be applied conditionally to the lab component if the corresponding property is true. First, I extract the lab style into its own constant. So const lab style is equal to styles lab and I put it here. And now I apply the conditional logic. So fastest and styles fastest, the same for the slowest. So slowest and styles slowest. If the fastest property is true, this whole line will be evaluated to styles fastest style. And the green color will be applied. The same holds for the slowest. If it is false, this will be evaluated to false and it will be ignored by React Native. The lab component is completed. Now we need to modify the labs table and find the slowest and the fastest lab. I start by extracting all the lab but the first one. So const finished labs is equal to labs slice one. We do this because we don't want to mark the current lab as the fastest one or the slowest. It will only mark the completed labs. I set the initial values for min and max. So min is set to max integer number in JavaScript, which is max safe integer, to ensure that at least one min lab will be found. The same way, max is set to the minimum number in JavaScript, so number min safe integer. We look for the slowest and fastest labs if there are at least two finished labs. So if finished labs length is greater or equal than two. And now I iterate through all the finished labs. So for each lab, okay. And if lab is smaller than min, min becomes lab and the same for max. So if lab is greater than max, max becomes lab. Let's save it. Okay, min is read only. Of course, we should use let here because it is not a constant value. Now I can test for being the slowest and the fastest lab from the lab component. So slowest when lab is equal to mean. Okay, we've got invalid property style colors applied to view. Okay, this is because the slowest and fastest should relate to the text and not to the view component. So here we should leave styles lab and now I change this to lab text and I can apply the style directly to the text elements and it should be a single lab. And now you can see that the slowest lab is highlighted with red color, but in fact it should be the fastest one. Okay, because slowest lab is when the lab is equal to the max value. Okay, now our labs table is 
completed. We are ready now to handle user actions. The first step will be to design component state. In React, we use state to control the data that changes over time. It is important to identify which components own that data. Usually, it is the top level component that passes the data to its children components as props. In our case, all the data will be owned by the app component. I start by migrating the data model into app component state. The initial state values are defined inside component constructor. So let's start with implementing the constructor. Constructor props. First, I call superclass constructor. And now I initialize the state. For this, I will just copy the values from our data model. And I will remove it because it's no longer needed. So data is not found because we need to switch to the state. Let's extract timer and lapse from the state. Equals this state and use them directly here. What should happen when the start button is pressed? The stopwatch starts measuring the time. To calculate the duration, I need to store the time when the measuring starts. I add the start property and initialize it with value zero. It will represent the stopwatch not measuring the time in the very moment. To calculate the duration, I also need the current time. Let's call it now and initialize with zero as well. I put it into state to trigger the app re-render when the value updates. When I subtract start from now, I get the timer duration. I don't need a separate timer property. I also make the labs array empty as we have no labs when the application starts. So instead of timer, I put here now and start. And timer is equal now minus start. Start and now will be represented as a number of milliseconds since the epoch time, which is January the 1st, 1970. This is what get time method of the date object returns in JavaScript. Now, when the state is designed, handling the button actions is easy. First, I define a start method. I pass it as the property to the start button. So let's split it into multiple lines first. And I set on press is equal to this start. I need to add the support for on press in the round button components. Okay, so I add on press property. I will use touchable opacity to render the round button. So touchable opacity. I need to add it here and import it as well. Let's split it into multiple lines so that you can see everything. Okay, now I pass the on press property to the touchable opacity. So on press is equal to on press. When I press the button, you can see that it becomes transparent. This is how touchable opacity works. It makes the component semi-transparent to give you feedback that it was pressed. I want to decrease the default opacity. So I will set active opacity to, let's say, 70%. Now it looks better. Now the final step will be handling disabled button. As you remember, when we start the app, the lab button is disabled by default. So let's add another Boolean property that will tell us if the button should be disabled. Okay, and 
if it is, I don't want it to change the opacity, so it will remain 1, otherwise it's 0 0.7. Also, when it is disabled, I don't want to call the onpress callback. So it is called only if the button is not disabled and then on press. Okay, I misspelled here, disabled. Good. Now let's get back to the start method. I get the current timestamp and set state start and state now with it. And also create a single initial lab. So const now is equal to new date get time. Now I call this set state. Now start is equal to now, now as well. And for labs, I create a single element with zero. When I press the start, the lab is added, but the timer is not changing. This is because I need to set the timer that will update the now state property on a continuous basis. I will use set interval function for that. This timer is equal set interval and inside I call this set state and now becomes new date get time Okay, and I want to call this method every 100 milliseconds. Now when I save and press the start, I got an error. This is because I haven't closed the parenthesis here. And I shouldn't have this here, but here. Okay, let's press start again. And you can see that the main timer is measuring the time. Let's make the stop lab updated. I will add the current timer to the value of the first lab. So first let's pass the timer to the lab stable component. So timer is equal to timer inside lab stable. Okay. I add it to the lab if index is zero. So only for the top lab index equals zero. If so, we add timer to the lab. Otherwise, it's just lab alone. I need to add the timer here as well. I save it. And now the lab changes the same way as the main timer. Now you can notice two things. First, that the timer and the lab jumps left and right. This is because the font that we use is not monospaced, so the digits have different width. Also, if any of the timer parts is less than 10, it's not added with zeros. Let's fix both of these problems. First, I will define a simple path function, so const path is equal. It takes a number as a parameter. So if number less than 10, I will return 0 plus n. It should be question mark here. Otherwise, I return just n. And I should add it inside a timer component. So here. Okay, and now let's pad each of the values that are printed. So pad minutes, pad seconds, and let's pad centiseconds. Now when I save, you can see that all values are Padded. To fix the jumping of the timer left and right, I will set the width of each of the timer parts to the fixed value. I will start by wrapping full timer component into a separate view. And I will also wrap 
each of the timer parts into its own text components. So I start from here. Let's move it here and here. And I close the text tags here and here. Let's save. Okay, now I need to set the proper size for this timer pulse. I go to the timer style. Let's start with some value, let's say 150. 150 is quite a lot, but the values are aligned vertically because I need to set flex direction for the timer component. So let's get back to timer and set style to styles timer container. And let's set it as flex direction row. Okay, now we can see that 150 is a lot. Let's try with 100. It's too small because it doesn't fit a single line. So let's increase it. Okay, should be good. Now when I press the start button, you can see that it is in fixed position. Now I need to do the same with the tiling of the lab text component. Let's start with some initial width, let's say 50. Okay, it's too much. Let's try 30. Yeah, it's better. I think we can leave it like this. When the timer is running, there is a different set of buttons rendered. Let's create a button row for them. So I just copy this button row. And when it is running, we've got a lab button that looks just like the reset button. And we've got stop button. Let's pick the styling of the stop button. First, the background color. And now the text color. This first row should be rendered only when the app starts and no buttons have been pressed. It happens only when the labs array is empty. Let's render it conditionally. Labs length equal to zero and now I will move this whole button row inside the parents. The lap and stop buttons are present when the timer is running, that is when the state start property is greater than zero. I will render it conditionally as well. So start greater than zero and now parents and I move the buttons inside. Now when I restart the app, I can see start at the beginning. When I press start, I see lap and stop. That is okay. Let's implement the handler methods for lap and stop button. So for stop, I will rename it to this stop. And for lap, it will be, okay. For lab button, the handler function is named this lab.
lab is equal to a method. When the lab is pressed, I insert a new lab at the first position of the lab array. So const first I get the labs from the state. So this state and now I call this set state and labs becomes zero at the beginning and now all the other lab that existed before. Let's start and test it. This does not save current speed time as it's zero all the time. I should first save the current timer value into the labs array. I also need to reset start and now with the current timestamp value so that the new lab counts from zero because now when I press lab the counting continues although the number changes. So let's update the lab function. First I get the current timestamp so const timestamp is equal to new date get time. Next I need not only labs here but also now and start. I also need to access the first lab because only the first lab will be updated with the current timer value. And I could use ES6 spread operators for that. So first lab and now other and this equals to labs. What this line does is takes the labs array and puts the first element into first lab variable and the tail of the array into the other variable. Now I can modify our set state call a bit. First, zero remains as it was, but the second element is first lab increased by current timer. So I add now and subtract start and after it goes all the rest, so other. I also reset start and now with timestamp. Okay, let's save it and now start and lab Okay, you can also see that now the lap with the number does not fit a single line. This is because we use the same styling as for the timer. So let's modify it a bit. And introduce another style which will be called lap timer. And it will only have the width of 30. Lab text is unchanged. Now I go to the lab and I add styles lab timer style to the timer only. When I refresh, the lab number is displayed correctly. Let's test it. So this was the fastest lab. Now this is the fastest one. The longest one is seven seconds so let's wait a bit okay it's eight i press lab lab current lab zeros i can scroll the labs but when i press lab i don't want this main timer to be zeroed each time to make it work i shall add the duration of previous labs to have the main timer show the total time that has passed so let's get back to the app component where we call the timer Okay, and here we have a timer, but we'll also add the values of all the labs. Labs, and I will use ES6 reduce function for that. This function takes two parameters. First, this is a function that takes accumulator value and current element. And I will just add it. And the second parameter is initial value. So let's split it and I will explain how it works.
So reduce start with the first lap and this is car and it adds its value to the total amount which at the beginning is zero. Then it goes through each element and increases the total value. So this way we've got all the laps added together and we add current timer to it. Now when I press the lap button the timer is not zeroed. The stop method is similar to the lap. I will just start with copying it. So stop is equal to and I will copy the body. First, in the stop method, we need to clear the timer so that the time is no longer updated. So I reference the timer that we created in the start method. In the stop method, I don't add a new lap and I also want to reset start and now and set it to zeros. So I don't need this timestamp. So now each time that stop is pressed, start and now are set to zeros. You can see that we miss the reset and resume buttons. So let's add them now. Reset and resume buttons are displayed in situation when we've got some laps in the state lap array, but the timer is stopped. So let's add the condition for it. So we've got laps length greater than zero and start is equal to zero. So the first button is reset and the second one is start. So let's call the methods reset and resume. For the resume button, I use the same styling as for the start button. Okay, and reset buttons looks just like the lap button. I start the app, press stop, and the buttons are rendered correctly. Reset clears the state to its initial values. So it's pretty simple. Reset is equal. And now this set state, and I just set everything here to initial value. So lapse becomes an empty array. Start becomes zero and so does now. Okay, when I now start the timer, press stop, reset, it's working. Let's implement resume now. Okay, so resume sets state and now to current timestamp and starts the timer again. So first, let's get the current timestamp. Const now is equal to new date, get time. And let's set the start and now with, and assign it to now for this set state. Start becomes now and now becomes now as well. When we resume, we don't touch the lapse array because we don't add anything or, or remove. The next thing to do is to start the timer again. So we do this the same way like in the start method. So let's copy it. Okay. Let's start it, stop, resume, let's add some laps, stop, resume, stop, 
reset. Okay, the last thing to do is to change this reset button at the start of the app to the lapse button, like here, but make it disabled. So I pick the color of this disabled button. And this is called a lap. And it has darker background and is disabled. Let's split it into multiple lines for better visibility. Okay, and also the text is a bit darker. It's not white. So let's pick the text color. Now, when I press the button, nothing happens because it is disabled. I can also see that this border is a bit too thick. Let's check if we can improve it. And if I set it to one, yeah, it looks nicer. The last thing to do in our application is to clear the timer when the app component unmounts so that all allocated resources are released. I will do it inside the app component in the component will unmount lifecycle method. So inside this I just clear interval and pass this timer as a reference. Okay, so our iOS app is finished but we can also easily run it on Android. So let me start a Motion Android emulator and start it. I will close iOS simulator now. Okay, it's starting. Let's get back to the terminal window. And now I press A to start the app inside Android device. Yeah. As you can see, the app works on Android and it looks almost the same. The only difference is that here the standard Android font is used instead of the font that is available on iPhones. But we can press the labs, scroll them, stop the timer, reset, so it's pretty much the same app. Well done! You've made it! If you followed me along, you've got a stopwatch application running now. Let's wrap up everything what we did here. We started with the static designs and broke them down into static components. Based on that, we implemented the user interface for the app. Next, we designed the application state and handled the interactions. That's quite a lot, but there is so much more to learn about React Native. We used only the most basic components, didn't use any animations, and there is no navigation since the whole app is just a single screen. When you work on a real app, you also implement automated tests and use continuous integration to run them. And we haven't discussed app releases and updates. If you want to learn all of the above and get a small group React Native coaching, join the React Native Academy at reactnative.education. See you soon.